Welcome to my shop, also known as my garage. Today I want to show you a great way to take a small piece of four-quarter lumber and turn it into a bowl. Now one of the reasons I like this method is that it takes very little wood. The board I'll be using is only about five and a half inches by 24 inches. So all of those scraps that we save from old projects, you can turn them into a bowl. And the other thing is there is very little waste with this method, so you maximize the small amount of wood you're using. So here are the general steps. First, you'll joint the two halves of the board, then clamp them together, no glue yet, and lay out concentric circles on both halves. Next, cut those half circles out on the bandsaw with the table tilted. Glue the half rings together and then stack and glue the rings to form the rough bowl. Then just finish up by turning the bowl. Now here are a few bowls I've made from boards. Here's one made out of Purple Heart, a little bit larger bowl. Here is one made out of Sapelli that is beautiful, I think has some really nice figure in it. And this one is made from Cherry, the same size board that I'll be using today. I guess if there's one downside to this process is that you can't do quite as much shaping as you could if you were using a big, thick bowl blank. So it'll never take the place of that or live edge bowls. But I think being able to get some beautiful bowls out of a very small piece of wood is well worth it. So let's get started by prepping the board. Your board can be no wider than half the swing of your lathe. My lathe has a swing of about 12 inches, so I use boards no wider than six inches. Again, this board is about five and a half inches by 24 inches, so I'll cut it in half. Of course, if your swing is larger, you can use a larger board. Next, you wanna joint the edge of the boards. What I do is determine the face of the board, mark a one on one board, a two on the other, and then run the one against the fence and the two away from the fence. Any discrepancy in the squareness of the fence will be offset when you glue the edges together. Once the boards are jointed, it's time for layout and to cut the rings. You'll start by clamping the edges together and finding the center point. Now using a compass, draw the largest circle you can around both halves. Now we need to figure out how wide to make each ring. Now I found that about seven eighths of an inch is a good compromise. It's wide enough to give you a little bit of wiggle room when you glue up the rings, but it's not so wide that you have to remove a ton of material when you turn. So measure seven eighths from that first line, then seven eighths from that mark, and so on. For a six inch board, I usually do four rings, but you can do five for a taller or larger bowl or three rings for a shallower bowl. Now adjust the compass and draw the rest of the circles. Once they're all marked, it's time to cut the rings. I use a bandsaw, but I suppose you could use a jigsaw or scroll saw maybe, as long as the base or table tilts. I found that 45 degrees is a good angle to use. You wanna cut on the line and you really don't have to be too fussy except when you begin the cut and the blade enters the wood. Commit to the line you start on and then adjust if you need to. The large outside rings are easiest to cut since the curve is pretty broad. It's a little trickier as you cut the smaller rings so be sure to use the right blade. Here's something that's helped me when cutting these rings to help stay on the line. If your cut wanders below the line, push the board slightly toward the blade to get back on line. If your cut wanders above the line, turn the board slightly to get back on line. Again, below the line, push the board. Above the line, turn the board. Now let's finish up cutting the rings. We have the rings cut now and it's time to glue them up. 
I put wax paper down just to make sure I don't glue the rings to the table. Apply a little glue to the ends of each ring and then just slide the joint back and forth to spread the glue and finally stop when it's aligned. You can hold it for a minute or so just to help it set. Now you might not think that's much glue surface and it's really not but it's not that critical because we're going to glue the next ring onto this one and that is plenty of glue surface. I've built dozens of these bowls and I've never had that glue joint fail. Now one note here. The next rings are going to stack on this, so be sure the top edges of the rings are as even as you can get. You'll see why in the next step. Finish gluing up each ring and then set them aside to dry for at least a couple of hours. We've got our four rings glued up. Now I tend to keep them oriented like they came out of the board, but you can experiment and shift them around if you want to. Once you determine how you want the bowl to look, make a reference mark across all of the edges to help align them when you're gluing them together. I've taken a flat board. This is a piece of MDF and use some spray adhesive to attach a sheet of 80 grit sandpaper. You want to make sure each ring is flat so you get a good bond. I make some very light pencil marks and then sand until they just disappear. A wide belt sander would probably work for this. I would not use a planer since I've heard horror stories of rings exploding across the shop. So I just sand and it only takes a couple of minutes. Here is where we wanted to pay special attention to the joints and make sure they're flat. Once your pencil lines are gone, the ring is flat. You don't need to sand the top of the top ring as it'll be the top of your bowl and you'll turn that away. You're also going to use a glue block or a screw block to attach the bowl to the lathe. That also needs to be nice and flat to ensure a good bond. Once you have all the rings sanded flat comes the fun part and that's glue it into a bowl. Well, all of it's fun, but I think this is especially fun. And there's probably a lot of ways you could do this, but the way I do it is use the corner of my assembly table. I've got my two clamps ready. I've got a call ready to go across the top to apply downward pressure. And the way I start is I have the largest ring face down on the tabletop, and then we're going to glue the bowl upside down. You'll start with the top or largest ring face down and apply a thin coating of glue. Next, you'll apply glue to the next ring. Now here's a great tip when gluing up things that might have a tendency to slip around. Get a few grains of salt, and I mean only a few, and drop them into the wet glue in a couple of places. The grains embed in the wood and help the rings from sliding around when you apply clamping pressure. And assuming you only use a few grains, it will not weaken the joint. Repeat this process for each ring. And finally, center the glue block and glue it onto the bottom. With the inverted bowl at the corner of your bench or table, center the call over the bowl and apply even pressure with the clamps. You should have a little bit of squeeze out around each ring. That's it. Let the glue set up for several hours. I screw the glue block to a faceplate and then attach it to the lathe. As you should do with anything on the lathe, I start it at low speed and make sure I'm out of the line of fire just to make sure nothing flies apart. This looks good so I can bring it up to speed. There are hundreds of videos out there on how to turn bowls, so I'm not going to spend a ton of time on that, but here are a few things worth mentioning. 
Since most of the boards you're likely to get are kiln dried, it's a little more difficult to turn than green or wet wood. You probably won't get the long shavings like you do with wet wood. And since the wood is harder, you'll need to resharpen frequently. And I cannot stress that enough. You need to sharpen your tools frequently. You'll get far smoother cuts with less sanding if you sharpen frequently. The good news is that once you finish turning, there's no need to wait to allow for drying or shrinking like with green wood. The bowl can be lightly sanded if necessary and finished. Finally, you can cut a small groove in the bottom and then use a saw to cut the bowl from the glue block. And while it's still mounted, I flatten the face of the glue block so it's ready to go for the next bowl. You'll probably need to do a little light sanding on the bottom of the bowl to remove any rough spots from the saw cut. One more thing, always sign and date your work. Wherever the bowl ends up, the owners will be happy to know who made it and when. Well, that's it. A bowl from a board. Not too bad. I hope you give this process a try. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.